Hi everyone, Dave Verdun here from InnovationTutorials.com, making innovation practical. So back in 2003, one of the big three auto companies here in Michigan contacted us because of our tools that we had for innovation, systematic innovation, inventive thinking, and problem solving and idea generation. So they said they didn't have time to learn them all, but they wanted us to come in and show them just the best ones. So I thought that was kind of a tough question. I really didn't have an answer, so I told them I'd get back with them later in the week with a proposal. And then I contemplated it. You know, how do I figure out what are the best tools for them? The answer was it depends. It depends on what they were trying to do. So just like when you go to your local Home Depot, the best tool for you depends on the job that you have at the time. And innovation and inventive thinking is exactly the same way. So what I did is I did a little research about common situations that call for inventive thinking. What are the tasks or what are the situations in a company that call for inventive thinking? And I discovered some common ones throughout industry that are industry independent. Things like uh, creating some new ideas or new features for a system or solving a technical problem or cost reduction or identifying growth opportunities. These are all situations that call for inventive thinking skills. So I listed all those situations down and then I listed in a matrix all the tools and skills that we taught and use uh, for innovation, for problem solving and idea generation. And that was the beginning of a matrix that we use to select the best inventive thinking tool for the situation. We call it our tool selection matrix. And if you look here, there is a picture of the very first version of it back in 2003 in today's version. So let's take a little bit closer look at the Microsoft Excel version of our tool selection matrix that we use to identify the best tools for a job or to design a workshop for a team. So let me show you some of the features of this Excel tool selection matrix. So you can see across the top in yellow are all the tools that we use for idea generation and problem solving. And then on the left side in pink are all the specific jobs. Let me scroll down here. We call them inventive thinking jobs to be done. You can look at these as situations that call for inventive thinking. So on the top left here, there's a bunch of little buttons that are designed for just quick tasks. For example, there's a button on the top here that says full view. So when I click that, you can get a full view of the tool selection matrix. And down here on the bottom, there's a button to, to zoom and reset. I like to have around 90% there. There you can see most of the chart. There's a button that sorts everything on the top alphabetically, or you can sort it by application. I'll explain that in a few minutes. And you can get rid of parts of the chart if you want to. If I click this button minus the jobs to be done, that part disappears. Let me reset. And there's also extra information on the chart on the bottom. Let me zoom out a little bit. If I click this, it gets rid of that extra information. And like I said before, if I click this pink one here, it gets rid of all these jobs. Sometimes you just want to look at the Pareto chart on the bottom. Um, and then you can, let me reset and show you there's another one here that's freeze pane so now you can scroll up and down like this with my scroll button on my mouse so the main purpose of it is to select the right tool for the job so you'll, you'll look up the job that you have depending on your situation and there's going to be many different situations but for example if you have a conflict or a contradiction improving one thing hurts another and you want to some tools to help you come up with ideas to solve your contradiction, well then obviously you go right across here and we look for the darkest cells. The darkest cells are the tools that are the best at doing that job. And the lightest cells, the white cells, are tools that won't help you with that job at all. There's also these little blue arrows where you can just sort a row on the best tools for that row. So if we want to resolve a conflict or contradiction, I can go across and visually see the dark ones. Here's a dark one here, which is the 40 inventive principles. Or I can just click this button here. Click. Now, instead of having it alphabetically on the top, it's listing the tools from the best to the worst, you know, by the darkness of the cell. So, you know, two great tools that you might know of to deal with contradictions 
are the trees tools, the 40 inventive principles, and the four separation principles. There's also some function of modeling, uh, function analysis type tools you can use uh, to help the situation, and so on. So there's only a few tools for dealing with contradictions versus if I want to reduce cost or complexity, let's sort on that row by itself. Oh, there's several tools to help you deal with cost and complexity. So this is just a way of picking the right tool for the job. Now, another feature that you have in here, let me sort this back alphabetically. Let's get the, the ones on top now, A, B, C, and so on. Quite often, um, I have situations where it's not just one of these. We, we want to learn tools for several of these situations. So that's why I created these weightings in this column here, column G. And you can actually put weightings in. So let's, let's say everything has zero weight. And then I'll, I'll talk to a client. I say, what are your issues that call for inventive thinking? And they'll say, well, we really have some cost issues we need to get, address. So we're going to give that a big value. Let's give it a value of eight. And we also want some new ideas you know, to wow our customers. We want to differentiate our offering from our competitors. That's a huge, that's even bigger than cost reduction. So let's give it a 10. And maybe we have a few contradictions that we'd like to resolve too. That's a, that's a big issue. And everything else is really not that important on this list. So now with that information, I can sort this list instead of alphabetically by application. When I hit this blue button here, it's going to take the weightings into consideration. It's going to create a little Pareto list of the best tools for these three jobs. If those are the three jobs that are really important, let's change one of them just to differentiate a little bit. Let's just make this one a, a five. All right. So I hit by application. So instead of alphabetically click, it's now going to sort these tools in a Pareto, and it's going to show you the best tools to the worst tools to consider for those three jobs that you're trying to do and those three weightings. So lateral benchmarking, trimming technique, function analysis, brain writing, value, value analysis, value engineering, effects knowledge base, and so on. So this is just a way of identifying what are the best tools for a given situation. Now, your given situation can be a specific thing, cost or complexity, or it can be multiple things. Now, I have several things. I have several people that I want to train on some of these tools, and we want to bring into the class the best tools to train these people in for all their reasons. So sometimes I actually use this to design a workshop. I will talk to my client, and they'll tell me which of these things on the list here in the pink are important to them and how important they are, and I'll use that to design a session. All right, we'll come in and we'll teach you these five things, and we'll get started using those five things on a particular project. Now, another, let's go back and make this alphabetical. Another uh, piece of information on the bottom here is, uh, I, I call it extra information about the tools. Do you need software for these tools? Um, matter of fact, here's an example. Let me get rid of the pink here get rid of that so now we can see the the tools and these this extra information on the tools so do you need software um, most of these tools almost all of them you don't need any software there's a couple of tools that you do need software for i also tell you how applicable these tools are for for innovation uh, and idea generation related to products software or services and business processes all the tools are very strongly useful for uh, products. But there are some of them that don't really work on software or business processes or services. Uh, for example, biomimicry. Biomimicry is very good for developing products, but very less applicable for software or services. It's a real stretch to use biomimicry for that, for example. How difficult it is to master the tool? Uh, this is an opinion, one to five. One, it's very easy to master this tool. Five, very difficult. I'll give you a little information on that. Um, and then the ideas that you're going to get from using these tools, are they very general ideas or very specific ideas? That's a little rating, subjective rating uh, that I put in there based on my experience. And then the last piece of information is, do you need customer input to use this tool? And interestingly, um, several tools you can use without any customer input, but there are some of the tools that you do need customer input to help you use those tools. And on the bottom here is this little Pareto that's really showing you um, how versatile the tool is. Let's zoom in reset. You know, this just basically shows you how versatile the tool is because if you look at the high bars, for example, this one's a pretty high bar here. 
And, and, and that means it's a versatile tool because functional thinking uh, and situation analysis has a big impact on all of these inventive thinking challenges. The very dark in the cell here, this is another big one here, which should be a big bar at the bottom. This is a pretty versatile tool, brain writing. It does a lot of different things. It can help you in a lot of different situations. Whereas there's other tools that only help you in a few situations. And here is a full view of the Microsoft Excel tool selection matrix. So that's it. That's the systematic innovation tool selection matrix. It's a way to identify the right tool for your inventive thinking situation. It's actually step three in our eight step systematic innovation framework. So if you're good in Excel, you probably could make that yourself, but some people are not good in Excel or want to save time and headaches just to have something that's already done. Oh, and to finish the story about that automotive company I mentioned in the beginning of the video, they went on to explain that the reason they wanted innovation and innovation thinking skills was to create some new ideas for one of the vehicles that they had that was losing share to a competitive vehicle in the same class. And that is exactly reason number one on the tool selection matrix, is to wow the customer to differentiate your offering from your competitors. So I looked across there, found the appropriate tools, and we, we went in and introduced them to about five or six different tools, and we actually used them to create several new features for that vehicle. Questions and inquiries can be emailed to info at innovationtutorials.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.